Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about protocols, which is a newish addition to typing. It's actually one of my favorite features of Python's, you know, typing stuff in my time and such. But anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so I have the same problem that I showed you guys in a previous video about overload. I will link the overload video in the description. Um, but basically we had, you know, a function that can take integers and return integers or slices and return bytes. And I also talked about how you can have a, uh, the index can be any class which defines double under index. Uh, so if we made, you know, our class here that defined double under index, which is a magical method which returns an integer, and say we return on 03 here, and we had a bytes object. Uh, we have to make it a little bit longer because I should have returned something less than three, but anyway. Um, we can actually index this. Normally we can index this with numbers. Uh, we can also index it with an instance of a thing that has a double under index method. And you'll note that when, uh, you know, when I wrote out this overload for that other video, I didn't actually go into details about, uh, you know, this special double under index thing here. And in fact, if we go and take our example here and we add class C index, and yeah, sure, we'll do return two. And if we return or print foo of C, I believe MyPy will complain about this. Uh, I actually have MyPy set up from the previous episode, but you can see how that there. Yeah, so you can see here, um, oh, looks like the type stubs of, uh, <laughs> of MyPy's bytes object actually don't handle this, uh, which is interesting. So maybe this, uh, Maybe this whole thing is not going to work out. Um, <laughs> we might have to pretend for a little bit. Uh, but anyway, we get no overload variant of bytes get in and matches the argument types bytes or C, which is correct. It doesn't, um, but we know that this works in reality. So if we run this, you'll see that we get 48, which I guess is the, uh, you know, the, the byte value for zero. Uh, but we can convince MyPy that this is fine, because it is fine, uh, but we need to tell it that this IDX can take any class that supports index. And to do that, we're going to use protocols, and what protocols implement are a concept called structural subtyping. Uh, the, the idea behind structural subtyping means that any object which matches the shape of some protocol can be accepted as that type. Um, in our case, the shape that we're looking for is something which defines double under index. Uh, and so we can define that shape or we can, you know, make a protocol for that shape uh, from typing import protocol. And the way you do this is you make a class which, uh, let's call it indexable, which extends protocol. And you just, you know, stub out all of the functions that it would need to support. And in our case, we really only care about this double under index function. So we can define double under index self returns integer and, you know, it's a stub. So we don't actually need to put the any body or any sort of type there. We're just showing my pipe. This is the shape of this object. And so then we can change our uh, we can change our overload here to take indexable and indexable instead of int and int. Um, <laughs> Because I believe that numbers actually have index as well. Yes, they do. So that's that's kind of a, a nifty thing here that we're taking advantage of. Uh, double under index of an uh, integer returns itself. Um, and I believe, well, I think we're actually going to see that MyPy has a, a bit of a bug here. Uh, invalid index type this for bytes, expected type slice. Yeah, so MyPy is unhappy about this line right here because it, it actually doesn't know about um, it actually doesn't know about the double under index protocol for bytes and this is probably something that could be fixed in type shit but anyway we can convince it of that so we can say um, if is instance idx slice return b idx else return b int uh, idx I think I think that will convince MyPy that everything is okay. Yeah, because this int function can take indexable. So this this function knows about this, but uh, the get item for bytes does not. 
Um, but yeah, this is just one use for protocols. You can kind of imagine a whole ton of different things you could do with this. Like, um, you know, one one use that I've used this for is to work around the uh, lack of support for circular types. So you can pretend to have a circular type by using protocols. Um, so here's like an example of a tree node where, uh, you know, def child is, or I guess you would do a tree, so it would be left is a tree node. Uh, I usually underscore these, uh, tree node. And dev right is also a tree node. I guess it would be optional tree node. Optional, uh, because you know you don't always have a left or a right, and you would maybe also have a value. Let's say that these are insert for whatever reason. Um, and this is the way that you say that it has read-only attributes. So even though it, even if it's not actually implemented as a property on the actual object, this is how you you know tell MyPy these are read-only objects. Otherwise, if you want read-write objects, you can just say like left is optional tree node um, instead of doing it this way. Um, so that's you know that's that's one way you can do this. But you can do this for any sort of attributes or functions um, and anything which has that shape will be allowed as this type. Now, usually when I'm trying to stub circular types, I'll have a, a concrete implementation implementation down here. So we'll maybe, you know, class tree node, uh, maybe it's a name tuple even, maybe we'll go even easier and say like left is optional and I'll use the protocol here instead of the concrete type. Uh, right, optional tr tree node and then value int. Um, so this is, you know, this is how I would use protocols to have a circular type here. And I can actually, I think Babby actually does this. Uh, get grab protocol. Oh, we've got quite a few protocols here. Oh, I also use this to do like interfacing. So you can, you can define an interface with protocols. That way you don't need to have, um, you know, a class hierarchy. You can just say like anything which implements a function that looks like this is valid as the type here. That's what I'm actually doing for this, um, this highlight interface here. So these protocols define how uh, a highlighter works in the text editor. And there's a couple of different highlighter implementations and they have to you know, implement all of these functions where these are, I guess, just attributes here. Um, but where's the circular one? Oh, <laughs> interestingly, I actually make an indexable type here, although I'm actually using get item instead of double under index here. But um, you can imagine there's there's another way that you might use protocols. Like this is this is saying that it needs to take an object that uh, has a good item that takes a key and returns a value. Um, but where's the circular one? Um, color KD. This is a KD tree. Um, but yeah, again, here's the left and right that are optional KD, and that looks a lot like this here. Um, although I, <laughs> it looks like I flipped the uh, underscores here, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, this is protocols. This is how you can use it to implement structural subtyping. Uh, you know, a lot of the abstract base classes that you might use could also be represented as protocols. So you don't need to have, you know, a true inheritance hierarchy. But anyway, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.